Just one week ago yesterday, as we were praying for the power of the Holy Spirit to descend at the Pentecost Vigil here at Our Lady Good Council, the Archbishop, our Archbishop Vigneron, was in effect doing the same thing at the cathedral as he presented his vision for the Archdiocese of Detroit in a pastoral letter called Unleash the Gospel. And in that pastoral letter, he lays out a plan for transforming the Archdiocese of Detroit to become a missionary church once again. And it is based on the foundational conviction that there has to be a total reliance that there has to be total obedience to the power of the Holy Spirit in order for us to become what he calls a band of joyful missionary disciples. While we will be unpacking that, that letter and the vision, that missionary vision in the days and the months to come, I would like for us today to just look at a small part of that the call for missionary families. And I think it's extremely relevant as we celebrate the most holy trinity this Sunday. So the Archbishop speaks of the family as one of the critical guideposts, as one of the essential components necessary in order to transform the culture that we live in. And he begins that section on the family by writing that families are at the very heart of our effort to unleash the gospel because they are the first and the most important setting in which evangelization takes place. Our proclaiming and our living out the good news of Jesus Christ must be first heard and felt in the home the domestic church, because this is where love is first experienced or not experienced. If our families fail to experience the unconditional sacrificial love in the home where they live, then how will they ever come to understand the unconditional sacrificial love of our Lord on the cross? And without a living example, how will our children ever be able to model that sort of love in their own family? Our families can transform our communities, and they will, to the degree that our homes become domestic churches. Imagine if every neighborhood had homes where the people who lived up and down the street knew it to be a place of faith, that knew it to be a place of welcome, a place where if a stranger went up to their house and knocked on their door because they needed some sort of help, that they would point to those homes and they would say, go there. That's where the Catholics live, and they'll help you. And as they enter into that home, they're not only welcomed and helped, but they find it a place where the love of the Lord is visible, palpable, and real. But unfortunately, our neighborhoods are, are not really like that. Our streets are mostly filled with little fortresses. So imagine your home and my home as being the one that people point to and say, that's where the Catholics live. And they say it because of our Christian witness. 
Imagine for a moment if the love of Christ so permeated our neighborhoods that as people entered it, they wouldn't read a sign that says, this is a neighborhood watch community. Instead, this is a neighborhood church community. You know, the catechism uses 2,865 paragraphs to explain what we believe and teach. But at the very beginning, at, as first importance, it tells us that God calls us together into the unity of the family, the church. And so the archbishop is faithfully carrying on the mission that the church has always had to invite all people into a relationship with Jesus. Even our gospel that we had today, John 3, 16, it tells us that God so loved the world, that's you and me, that's our neighbor, that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him should not die, but have eternal life. Also in the beginning of the catechism, in the very second chapter, or very second chapter, paragraph, it beautifully describes what a missionary church, what a missionary people should look like. And it reads in part, so that this call should resound throughout the world, Christ sent forth the apostles he had chosen, commissioning them to proclaim the gospel. Strengthened by this mission, the apostles went forth and preached everywhere. Well, the Lord worked with them and confirmed the message by signs that attended them. In the third paragraph of the catechism, it says, this is speaking to us, to all of us here. Those who with God's help have welcomed Christ's call and freely responded to it. Think of the cards that we signed. Are urged on by the love of Christ to proclaim the good news everywhere in the world. All Christ faithful. And so all Christian families are called to hand it on from generation to generation. And so you see this missionary sending out is at the very heart of the archbishop's pastoral letter. And he has rightfully placed the primary responsibility for handing on the faith exactly where it belongs, in the family. And that includes everyone here. Because every person here is some sort of a family member. So you're either a daughter or a son, a mother or a father, an aunt or an uncle, a grandparent, a brother or a sister, you're married or you're single. We're all members of a family. But more importantly, if we're baptized by water and the Holy Spirit, we are a member of God's family. And the tragedy of our modern time is that the family is in crisis. St. John Paul II, he recognized that as the family goes, so goes the nation, and so goes the world that we live in. So the family is in crisis but it's not lost. Not as long as we come to recognize that the most holy trinity is a model. It's a model of the familial love in totality, in unity, and in fidelity. The archbishop also includes a quote from Pope Francis, that the triune God, the trinity, is a communion of love, and that the family is its living reflection. 
And so the archbishop, listening to many voices around him, and he certainly did do that, he developed a path for reclaiming the family. So first and foremost, it will be through the power of the Holy Spirit working through the family at home, the domestic church. But it needs to be supported. It needs to be supported. The family needs to be supported in its mission by other families within the parish. And it can be accomplished. It can be accomplished through ways like having committed, faith-filled, married couples, mentoring one-on-one -on -one with young, engaged couples, even after their wedding. It can be accomplished by a family extending a friendly invitation to another family, or perhaps to a young adult, or to someone we can see that they seem to always be by themselves. You can invite them to breakfast after mass, or even better, invite them to your home for dinner. And it doesn't mean to be intimidating. Just share your story. There are many ways in which we can build up the family, and it is so critical that we strive to expand our focus on the family to include all the areas and all the aspects of family. In fact, we have expanded the marriage and family ministry to go beyond the two primary focuses that we've had to now eight. And there are other ways in which we are going to embrace the mission to the family in the months to come. In 2003, at the Fourth World Meetings of Family, then Pope John Paul II spoke these words of encouragement. He said, Dear Christian families, proclaim joyfully to the whole world the wonderful treasure as domestic, the wonderful treasures that you have as domestic churches, Christian couples, in your communion of life and love, in your mutual self-giving, and in your generous openness to children, become in Christ the light of the world. The Lord asks you daily to be a lamp which does not remain hidden but is put on a stand and it gives light to all in the house. So as I mentioned, we will be taking a much deeper look at this missionary vision for transforming the Archdiocese of Detroit in our own parish. And so I ask you to please download the pastoral letter from the Archbishop Read it and pray on it because together with the power of the most holy trinity, we truly can accomplish the vision of becoming missionary disciples in our families, in our neighborhoods, and in the world. <laughs>